Okay. So, top tier. One small RD. They've got more. Well, it's probably about the same tank destroyers. Mm, they've got a little more speed than you, which will give them potentially an advantage to take the hill. You still want to start heading up there to get your, your free shot of damage. You're not really worried about the 304 uh, uh, right at the, at the start. You just don't want to get pinned down by the 304. But you definitely want to start heading up here. Make sure you can get your free shot of damage if you can. Are you using the 90 or the 105? You are using the 105. It's fine. No, no problem with that. You'll see in your bulldog are headed up there. Oh man, this IS-6 is going to cut you off, I can tell. Oh. So really what you want is you want to cut up this inside. Even if you're going to go over there, you still want to cut up this inside to get that one shot of damage uh, if you can. And then you can just basically cross and, and do the rest. Because that can make the difference for like that ELC fighting that other ELC. Or this bulldog actually goes up. Especially when there's only one arty. Like you needed to be able to, to help out your boy. And then coming over to this position is not, not a bad idea. The, the, the only problem with this position is that they do have a 304, so this position is more vulnerable than you would think than, than it would be in a, in a regular game if there was uh, regular artillery. So they're bringing some guys around this outside here, which is good for them. And then you peeking here doesn't really provide anything at this point. <laughs> Those, these are not the shots you're looking for. And then you saw how your like uh, left track was up on here. That was actually raising the side of your tank, which actually made it more difficult to get a shot. You theoretically could have gotten a shot to the side of the T thirty four. Would have been would have been um, tough because it would have been just over the horizon. But like you would have at least had the depression to do it. You just needed to move a little bit further away from this hill. And again, this area that you're in, if the three hundred four is competent, is not a good area to, to hang out in. That is, this is, these are not the shots you're looking for. That was a little bit better, but... Oh, here we go. 304 has, has moved into position. And so that's sort of the problem of, of playing this in this particular configuration. Like, it, it, when it... When it comes down to it, if you're not going to be able to push here, if you're not going to really be able to, to damage these guys, what you don't want to do is just sit somewhere where a 304 can blink, 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 blink. Right, just keep plinking away at you. Um, and so that generally means, you know, doing something a little bit more active. Your team doesn't have any map control. They have basically two thirds of the map. Uh, you guys really don't have any any good position. And again, you know, we, we always talk about the importance of the hill, um, but you still need to be able to play, you try to do something without it. And you're sort of in a rough position because there's tier eight tanks in front of you that, although that SU-152 just did on that moot. Uh, there's tier eight tanks in front of you that you're not necessarily going to be able to just drive forward and out clock. Nice shot. Let's see if you he, he's trying to flank somebody. Let's find another target. You should be able to shoot that guy. Lol. Half aim shot? Good enough. And that JT-88 is actually not in a very good position, um, especially because of the artillery. We've lost track. Your positioning isn't bad. You actually don't want to back up too much there. Drive on. That's a good shot. I just didn't go. It'll happen. Don't, don't sweat it. The 304 is not plinking your position, so I would focus on this JT-88 because he's not in a very good position. And he's like killing the guy and somebody behind you. That is the shot you want. Again, he's gonna struggle to, to damage you over that little bit of the hill there. So you can hang out there a little bit more than you are, simply because you want to protect your guys behind you. Like sometimes conserving your health is important, but like if if the you know if the JT88 is owning you, that's one thing. But the JT88 is gonna struggle to pin you from that angle over that little 
over this little bit of that hill there. So if you can keep your guys alive by allowing the JT-88 to continually shoot your track, right, then you actually want to do that. That's part of your role as a, as a heavy tank is to absorb that. Like he has yet to deal a single shot of damage to you, right? And so that's that's really what you're looking for. You're a little bit straight to him now, though. Like, see, notice how before you were angled a little bit more this way, and that actually creates a, more of an angled front there. You're actually more head-on to him now, so it's a little bit worse positioning than you were before. And again, like, if you have that inside position here where you can protect your guys behind you from getting smoked from these guys, that's, that's really where you want to be, because the position that they're at is not actually a very good position. But, like, this is the shot that you want. Like, if he's going to sit there, then all right, go ahead and sit there. And you can always load APCR if he's going to stare. Yeah, exactly. Go straight in. It's 250, but at this distance, it'll, it'll, it'll go right through. All right, because you have to remember the, the reason why APCR or, you know, any of the AP shells fail, uh, for the most part, is because of the distance, because you lose penetration as it crosses. Good job. Then you can switch back to regular AP. Unfortunately, the, your bulldog was, did not have very good position. So the, the 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 thing about this position that you're in right now is that the guys on the hill actually can't shoot you. So you can actually sit there. The only thing that you're really worried about, as I've said before, is the 304. The 304 positions themselves to shoot you. There's nothing that you can do about that. And that, that's sort of what you want to avoid. Avoid. But it looks like their FE-304 was not that smart. He didn't really just say, okay, I'm going to go kill this guy that's, that's basically pinned there. So you never really actually worried about the guys behind you. Uh, these guys are guys that have to be worried about those guys that are behind you, right? But you, you were never, there was never really any threat from the guys that were in front of you, right? The JT-88 wasn't really a threat to deal damage to you. The T-34 theoretically could have, but he just kept poking out sideways, and that's not really gonna, gonna get it done. So again, like that's, that's fine dealing with these guys here, uh, but you don't need to worry about those guys there. I mean, obviously you can now, because these guys here are dead. And so you do need to reposition though. Like you cannot stay where you're at, especially now because you are basically the last man standing. And so because of the comp that they have, you theoretically could actually push up there. So what you don't want to do is point your ass towards an FE-304. Again, it's, you know, you want to put yourself into a position where you can... And again, so you don't want to hang out where you're hanging out right now. Just, just too easy for me to shoot you as if I'm the FE-304. Enemy armor is damaged. And then you're fine, exactly. So this is this is perfect positioning in here, right? The FE-304 can't really land on you. He's got to go all pretty far out in order to get it. You basically use this hill in exactly the same way you use the hill against the JT-88. You don't have anybody behind you that you need to protect, though. And so that's an important note. That the KP's coming around this other side. You always want to shoot the guy that's actually moving forward because that's usually going to create more problems for you, for your team. Enemy armor is hit. You, want to be, you, want to, you want to have a little bit more angle for that T25-2, right? The M4A1, the KP had already shot. You're pretty square to this 25AT uh, and 25 slash 2 you want to turn a little bit more to your side to give him a, a, a harder shot you also want to get a little bit closer to this wall right and you always want to minimize how many of these guys can shoot you at any one given time because you want to be the one that dictates the uh, the engagement uh, as much as possible And if those guys are going to cower, seeing how this guy is backing off, you can go forward to get that shot. You do need to start taking guns out here. You can't allow yourself to continually be surrounded there. And again, you are a little square, so you got to keep that in mind. And then moving forward here is fine. You can actually move forward a little bit more to the... You can actually just push this corpse forward a little bit and then move over into this area because actually what you want to be able to do is start pushing them out that way because you don't have control of the hills so you can't actually just drive away from the hill but you do need to get a, a little bit more to the east so you can pressure these guys because you're basically just allowing these guys to 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 figure out okay well how how can we get them completely surrounded and, and you don't want to allow that to happen 
Like I wouldn't worry about the guys up top, but you do need to move down low. Oh, the FE-304 has... he has moved! So, you know that the FE-304 is over here now, so you can't actually do execute that plan anymore. So they're going to be able to pressure you. The interesting thing is, because these guys are over here, and the FE-304 is over here, it actually gives you this avenue where you can literally just... well, you got to drive backwards, but, you know, drive back out over here, and then go up and, and retake the hill. Like, there's no reason for you to, to stay here and engage these guys. You, you, don't, you just don't have to. And again, what you really, 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 really want to avoid as any as any heavy on any map is just sitting in an area and allowing people to just plink, 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 plink. And if you just sit there, then that's what that's what's going to happen. So you identify that most of the tanks that are that are a threat to you, as far as the the M4A1 and the KP, they're they're in front of you, right? These guys up on the hill don't really have shots on you. All they can really do is proxy you. You know that the FE304 is up here. So that's all of their team. So there's nothing stopping you from literally just backing out there and then going up here and then killing anybody. Like there's nothing. There's there's nothing stopping you except for you. And there's no reason to shoot there. Oh, you did bounce. Oh, keep going. No, don't turn around. Don't give him your ass. You do need to get out of there. Oh, here comes the AT-7. Oh, you got this. You just want to shoot. Uh, he's ticking you down. Yeah. Okay. Now you're kind of boned. But you do still need to try to back out of there. You can do it, my man. You can do it. Enemy is hit. We're done for. Everyone get out. Yeah, you, you need to just back out of there. Like, into that, that, that 12T. Not that big of a deal. Even if that 12T completely clips you out, deals damage on every single shot, and lights you on fire, assuming you have a fire extinguisher, right? That's still a better trade. And, and he's probably not going to be able to do that. So there's no reason for you to turn your ass to all the guns that we've already said. Hey, these are the guns that are really going to hurt you. These are the guns that you got to that you have to avoid, right? So. All, it would have been really easy. You knew where all of their tanks were. Just back out of there. Come up this way. If the 12T shoots you in the ass, so be it. I mean, you could turn your turret around because the back of your turret is, is, you know, reasonably solid. And who knows how how well these guys would have shot. But that 12T would have died pretty quickly, anyways, uh, given when he actually did die. So you actually probably wouldn't have taken that much damage. But you needed to get out of that position. It was just once you established that, hey, all of their guys are right here. Right, just just back out of there and just go and, and start bullying people someplace else. Because you always want to put yourself in a position where you can bully. Like this, where this T29 is, this is not a good position to, to bully people. This is a good position to get bullied in. But you'll see that a lot with, with campers, though. So. But otherwise, that was fine. I, again, I think that you should have come up over here first because you want to get that first shot of damage on either that ELC or that bulldog that goes up the hill. And then it was fine the way that you played that area for the most part. Again, if the JT-88 has no chance to deal damage to you, then allow him to continually you know, bounce off of you, shoot your track, whatever, right? Because it, it, you're actually helping your teammates because your teammates were getting owned by that guy, which is which is a shame because he was not in a very good position and you were in a position where you could have countered him pretty easily. Um, and then it was just sort of micro positioning. Like there's a window there where I thought that you could have pushed east uh, along this hill to get to the backside of these guys to put pressure there. But as soon as the 304 is over here, you just got to be like, okay, well, there goes that plan. And then once you establish that, oh, hey, look, the AT-7 is up top of the, with the 12T. Just back out of there, then come back up here, and then bully those guys, and then you can deal with the, the rest. Um, it's a, the problem that I think that a lot of people have in, in a lot of heavy tanks or a lot of slower tanks is that they tend to not go anywhere. Like, they tend to think that not moving is a better course of action than moving. And it, it, it just very, very, very rarely ever is. Like this, this T29 could help this SU, but he's just choosing not to. 
And again, that's just a sort of thing where moving is better than not moving most of the time. All right, anyway, so we don't need to all watch it alone. We can fast forward through the end of this because I'm pretty sure we know. Oh, did he hit him with the HE? All right. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, your team didn't do super awfully. Um, you didn't have very much map control, and that's in part your your fault for uh, not at least getting a shot on those guys in the hill. Not like you didn't have even an opportunity. You didn't even look to maybe do it. Like, uh, let me put it this way. So let's say it was just the they only sent their ELC up there, and it's one ELC versus the other ELC, right? Um, if that's all that there is, if that's all the enemy decides to send to the hill, you weren't not you were not in a position to actually benefit from that. You weren't in a position to actually support any of that. And so even if you don't feel like, you know, I've seen this a lot like on mines where, uh, you know, the other team has, you know, all tier 10 mediums, your team has one tier 10 medium, but you're that one tier 10 medium. You still got to look on the hill. Like you don't necessarily want to commit to the hill because I've seen it before where I, I go look at the hill in my tier 10 medium, I don't see any of the enemy. And I'm just like, all right. And I just walk up there and take it in my single tier 10 medium when they had five, but they're just like, oh, hey, we're going to go island, right? And so if you don't at, at least check, you know, if you don't have the opportunity, you know, allow yourself the opportunity to maybe we'll take it because of X, Y, Z, then you're going to miss those types of situations. But otherwise... I mean, I thought I thought you did mostly fine. I thought you could have abused that JT-88 a little bit more in terms of using your armor and, and basically baiting shots off of him, but I, I thought you did well enough. I, I feel like you probably could have carried that game just uh, by backing out of that, that north side of the hill a little bit earlier. Once you once you determine where all the tanks are and you know that they're all in front of you, just you know, just back out of there. There wasn't there wasn't really anything keeping you there. And uh, it, it also goes back to the to the point which we make a lot, which is understand what it is that you're afraid of. You're not really afraid of that 12T. You're you're afraid of the uh, the M4A1 and the and the KP shooting you, not of the 12T shooting you. Otherwise, GG, nice try. All right, so the next one is in 916. So let's hope this works. Yeah, it does that sometimes. It was just loading very slowly. Looks like it's looks like it's almost loaded now, though. So we got that going. All 
Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we got a gun. Uh, I hear some engine sounds. I see a black screen, but I... Okay, there we go. It just... It really didn't want to start. Alrighty. So, no already. Lighter comp. Yeah, again, especially when you have lighter comp, I, I like to check out here. Again, you know, we've talked about this before, but really if you push the one line, it makes it really easy for the two line. Like this IS-7 can just hammer people on the two line, just because it's it's very difficult positionally to, to counter that. Um, I'm, I'm not really much of a fan of the hill. Again, it's really easy to shoot the hill from down low. Typically, the team that's more aggressive down low uh, can, can have an advantage to win the game. The hill does not project very well onto the rest of the map, which is the, the big problem. And you combine that with the fact that the entrances are in the corners of the map, it just means that you don't really have a whole lot of opportunities there. Oh, you got owned by the snapper! Yeah, I don't think you need and or want to keep peeking that. That's a, that, is, that is not a good... That is not a high quality shot <laughs> to shoot at a, at a GT88 through, through the roof. So basically now, I mean, given your configuration, you need to just be a little bit patient because you can't push this lane. You don't actually have anybody pushing that outside. If they push the one line, then, then you guys are basically toast over here. So you're basically waiting to see if they push around the castle there, but they don't really have, there's not a whole lot of uh, impetus for that. This is not a super great shot, so sitting in this window is not necessarily a very good idea. It also gives uh, your opponent a pretty easy shot from the other side. You're not, you're not going to really get a whole lot of shots out of this. Like you're better off at this point, literally just driving up into the, into this corner or something. That Russian snapper. And they are pushing along that outside now, which is excellent for them. They do have that WZ-132 on the outside. He's going to be a difficult shot because he's, he's going to be close to that ridge unless he backs up. Like that. And then, again, so what you don't want to do is you don't want to sit in this window when you're shooting up there. It's just too easy for these guys to shoot over there. You want to be a little bit, you know, basically halfway in between. And essentially what ends up happening is that you can use, let's see, was it these ruins right here to basically block you. And then you just poke out from that, get your shot, and then poke back behind these ruins by sitting back here. Where you're at, it's just a little bit too easy to get shot. Or bounce. Oh, he's there. Yeah, and, like these are not good quality shots that you're getting right now. And again, remember, it's, uh, the more that you actually do early on, the more important that is. Like doing, uh, getting damage late in the game is not nearly as important as, as getting damage early. You guys are starting to push up here a little bit. It's something that you need to, you need to look to, to help your team do something rather than sitting in the back getting low quality shots. Because these are not, these are not the shots that you, that you want. So this is fine. Like if, if if these guys are just gonna sit there, hey, have at it, right? No problem. Like this is this is this is a good position if they're gonna sit there like that. But short of that, if they're not gonna sit there, you need to do something else. And again, this. So w when we go back and forth and we evaluate, where have you gotten quality shots from? You have not gotten quality shots from here. There's, there's, there's not a single quality shot that you've gotten here. So you keep going back to these places that, that aren't really effective. See, the, the problem that you're having is that you're spending so much of your time just kind of hanging out. Just kind of hanging out. Got to do something. Like you could see how this Skoda is out here. You could actually be closer to where this Centurion is and get shots on him. I guess you can get shots on him for you. So this is actually then a, a, a decent position if he's gonna, if he's gonna sit out there like that. All right, now now I don't have problems with this position. But it's still too much. Like your team is doing stuff. I mean, you're getting shots though, so I can, so you can't complain too much. But I don't feel like you've 
you're getting shots because you've put yourself into a superior position to get those shots. I feel like you're getting shots just because your team is coincidentally forcing the enemy to, to roll back into these spots. Just drive over there and shoot him in the face! Come on, man! You're like, you, your team has like left you behind. Just get out there and do it! Oh, here we go. That's what we're talking about. Go out there and get it done. Get after it. Fortunately, you guys are dying. I wouldn't worry too much about those guys. You actually need to move forward a little bit more here. Oh, okay, except for the JT-88 is coming out over here. I would actually push him, get to the side. Because you don't want to... So what you don't want to do is sit too far back, because then those guys on the hill will, get, will end up shooting you. Your guys are too far back to actually help you now. So you know how you you know how your friends felt when uh, when you were sitting back there and they were engaging with these guys. For whatever reason, they haven't shot you on the from the hill though. So keep it up. You you do have the STI drive moving forward. You do need to keep a keep a, a watch on your rear. That JT88 is not facing you. Oh, come on, Scorpion! You can shoot him. Yeah, I don't know that you needed to repair that. So you definitely don't want to sit out where you're at. Like you need to, to risk it. You need to risk pushing him. He's got 240 alpha. Yeah, that works. Unfortunately, you guys just didn't win down here fast enough. You had more than enough resources to win down here, you just didn't. Um, you're better off covering your T-54E1 than going around to the back. By the time you get back there, the Oh my god, man! Make a decision! Now you now you really don't have the time. Unfortunately, that might cost you 254 you want. Yeah, and at this point, all you can really do is uh, put on some cap pressure. Like, I, w I would put on cap pressure, it's probably better than, I don't know what you're doing, chase, trying to chase this guy down. They've, they've got, I mean, the 50B and the other guys can potentially push you, but chasing after them when you're one shot to every, every one of those tanks, you'd rather draw them in than, than run into them. Lol, especially now, get to the side, get to the side and then look for the bat chat. No, there's no reason for you to, to poke and peek on him. Just get to his side. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit bigger of a problem. But again, that, that sort of highlights this idea where if you would have been better off drawing them in than, uh, than chasing after them. I'm not entirely sure what that, what that was going to accomplish. I don't know, the Scorpion did kill the Bat Chat though. The Bat Chat was only one shot. Unfortunately, this T95 is not gonna do anything here. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's, well, here, let's, we'll do a review and then speed it up because I don't know when this is gonna end exactly. So, anyways, coming over here isn't necessarily bad. Um, the Conqueror did get a lucky snapshot on you, but that'll happen. You trying to snapshot that that JT through the window over here while he's aiming on your corner—that's that's that's an ill-advised shot. 
Um, and again, as long as they're going to sit up on this hill, then you can sit there and, and shoot and get collect your free damage. That's fine. But, you know, when your team starts doing stuff, especially down low, you really want to be able to, to support that because you, you, you don't want to be stuck in the back. And I felt like if you had come up over here a little bit earlier, like before the M103 died and before you guys that came over to this side uh, uh, all got sort of owned you could have been the guy putting some pressure from this outside and preventing these guys from from being able to to do anything which you eventually did but you you did it by yourself right and it would have been much easier if you did it while your teammates were still alive which is one of those things that we always talk about which is basically see when your team is actually doing stuff and, and move to actually support them like move to be like okay well these guys are here. These guys are going to try to shoot them. So how do I put these guys in an uncomfortable position? That's basically doing what you did. So you did the right thing. You just did it too late to save your, your team. And, and that ultimately hurts you because you lost a lot of health there that you didn't necessarily need to if you had teammates. And it's the same thing. Like your teammates did the exact same thing, right? That T-95 and that Scorpion. And there was another tank that was just kind of hanging out back here. And they were watching you fight all these tanks which is basically what you were doing for while your team was was fighting on this d line you were just watching them and then when this guy happened to drive back backwards out over that thing you were able to, to get some shots and things like that but but again that doesn't seem like oh that was your masterful positioning that you got you that shots that was just them driving backwards through those areas to get away from from your team and you can say well you know i knew that was gonna happen okay sure i'll give you that but then, if you knew that was going to happen, why didn't you help your guys over here earlier? If, you, if you're if you're such a psychic, um, and then uh, uh, to me, like it, this was a, a game of if your team was a little bit slow in terms of um, actually putting on pressure down low. But when they did, you were a little bit slow to help them. And if if either one of those things occurs faster i think you win down here faster right and you can either support your guys on the hill with, with fire or put pressure on these guys to have to come back to to, to deal with you and, and neither of those things happened and, and that was sort of the the bigger drawback there one of these guys oh look the sti did push good for you sti the T95 is like, I have no idea what this T95 is doing. This T95 is like, I've got superior positioning or uh, maneuverability. That's... Yeah, you didn't get a whole lot out of your team. Again, a lot of those guys that go hill are going to struggle. A lot of those guys that were down low just, just didn't do enough to help each other like again it, it, it was very piecemeal in terms of your guys's activity down low you had more tanks you had more weight down there it felt like you guys could have won down there it was just everybody was doing their own thing on their own time and particularly for when you have these local advantages you want to be able to assist your team in, in those types of positions otherwise it Thought you did fine, more or less. I mean, you you got a you had opportunities to bully lower tier tanks, which is you know what you should do. But again, I, to me, this was a winnable game, and the way that you win this game is you find opportunities to keep your guys alive. Your um, the guy the guys down low um, a little bit earlier, and it's like if you keep those guys alive down low a little bit earlier even if you have to bleed a little bit to get it done you don't have to do that that 1v4 against the uh the moots the 1390 the jt and the conqueror you don't have to do that 1v4 all by yourself and so you bled a lot there and so essentially what i'm getting at is that if you bled if you bleed a little bit earlier you won't bleed as much later because you won't have to do that one before and that actually helps you like you that actually helps you survive longer um and that helps your teammates survive longer because you won't have to do that type of exchange and so that's sort of the takeaway that i got from from this replay is that you ultimately did the right thing in terms of winning that side but you waited until everybody in front of you was dead before you you like went in there and he manned it right which it's great i mean you you, you won but well, I mean, you won that side, but at what price, right? Your teammates are already dead and you lost 80% of your health doing it. So 
uh, that to me that's the, it's different. Uh, I would rather lose half of my health, have the M103 be a you know a one shot or whatever, and then we win that side, right? Because then we still have you know more tanks, and then ideally what happens is that that spurs the guys that are behind you to actually drive forward and and shoot things. But GG, nice try. Again, I, I just want to point out that it, for both of those games, the T32 game on mines and this this 430 game on on Himmelstar, I, I really feel like that was those were both winnable games. It's just uh, slight strategic shifts in terms of understanding whether you're the one that's under pressure or the enemy team is under pressure and where you need to 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 go to actually hurt the your opponent the most Alrighty, so next... Let me go back to 917, so let's see if the mods work. Now... Cross your fingers. Yes, this is a replay review night. So if you're not here for replay reviews, you should probably come back on another night. Why does my window seem like? Okay, no. So it's working on my screen. Oh no. Okay, there we go. So it is working on my screen. It just looks a little funny. For some reason, it's not like centered on my monitor. All right, but the good news is it is working. Alrighty, so you're an LTTB, you're essentially top tier. Um, you are on the uh, North Spawn, which I always feel ha has an advantage. We talk about this a lot in the, uh, in the stream whenever I play Cliff. But <clears throat> essentially, if you play up through here, right, you always got to look and see what artillery they have. They have a GW Tiger P, which is a relatively slow artillery. There's a few artillery that can get out, and if they can get out, then they can hit onto the other side of this rock here but short of that any artillery that stays in um, really can't um, uh, with, with very few exceptions like CGC potentially do it but even the CGC he has to land the shot like basically right on the tank and that, that's that's not an easy shot and so it's really easy to keep them lit in the middle and that makes it a, a easy for your artillery and you'll notice that your artillery is going over to this west and so the, he gets really easy shots into this back side of the hill which is why I always say that the north spawn on cliff has this advantage to to play through the middle you don't really need to a whole lot in order to to block it off and then again as i've also said many times in the stream i'm not a big fan of taking the lighthouse early i don't feel like they like it conveys a huge advantage in the early game um i feel like it conveys an advantage in the the mid to late game uh, going up there early just it, it, it essentially minimizes the the number of things that you can do not not maximizes it and especially in the LTTB you're not going to be able to get like any shots or anything you don't necessarily want to just drive around like that again like spotting those guys in the back is is essentially good but you could have done that same thing from here in in relative safety rather than be driving around up here where, where other things can shoot you um, so that's that's something to keep in mind they've, they've got their 5100s over here which is actually good for your team but you'll notice that the problem with with being up here especially in the early game is that there's really not a whole lot for you to do like even 
and, and so lighting these guys on the back side here is actually becomes more irrelevant because your artillery can't even shoot those guys. That's just too risky for me. Like that's like again, you can get that exact same intel from where from where your uh, your buddy is over here, and you don't have to drive out there to to do in order to do so. Unfortunately, you do have a lot of guys on that one-two line. You got some campers back here, but but that'll happen. Okay. And then now, see how so you you guys don't really have much of a lock in the middle, which is unfortunate because again that that forty forty three can hit into where that t thirty two is pretty easily. That t thirty two has been lit the whole game. So now here's where you can actually help out your is three a little bit because this t thirty four is pushing around. As things push around here, once they basically pass through this midpoint here, you can start pressuring them. You basically use the lighthouse to block you out. You sit in this, that little ditch and you just annoy them. And this just make, gives them some additional thing to think about other than shooting your, your friend over here. And, and really, when we talk about this game, we, we've talked about it a lot in the replays tonight. A lot of the game is just figuring out ways to help keep your team alive. Uh, just too risky. Just too risky. And, and, and again, like see this little ditch that you're in right here? Again, you can get shots into these guys, and, and even in an LTTB because of the sloping of this hill. And the nice thing is, you have to remember that tanks are very, very, very lightly armored on the, the both the ceiling of the turret and the ceiling is on the, uh, the top of the engine decks, things like that. So, th so that's actually a really easy shot to pen. It's not like you need any special uh, uh, gun or anything like that. So you, right now, you're missing out on the best part of actually being here, which is helping your helping these guys see how they're basically pushing through there and, and by basically sitting on that that area right there and pressuring them what that what that causes these guys to do is that it causes them to stop right and that's what's really important because it gives this guy time to to make a decision as far as what it gives this t-34 time to to back these guys up and it puts these guys on the clock in terms of what they can do so again, the position that you're at, what are you, what are you contributing to the team? Are you lighting anybody of significance? No. Are you shooting anybody? No. Oh, I guess I guess you've got a shot now. But again, is that guy? I guess he's going after your 5100. But I don't think that guy's going to be able to to kill your 5100. Already kill shell could kill your 5100. Again, like shooting these guys in the back, not nearly as important as what's going on over here, and you could e you could easily be contributing over here rather than sniping their their backline guys over here. And again, this is sort of the problem with the LTDB. You don't really have a whole lot of gun depression, so like getting these shots isn't necessarily a done deal. <laughs> So your team is getting whittled down, and again, this this is the time now where this position is actually relevant. And again, shooting that KV-85 not really helping your team. Again, it's these guys right here that are getting smoked. Like those are the guys that you can help. Like you can still make a difference in this game. Do it. Just go. You can go either over there to the right, or you can just hang out over here. Whichever one. Get your shots. Get your shots, my man. Use your, use your zoom, my man. No, just just use use your sniper mode. Go into sniper mode. You're making it. You're making it so hard on yourself. And then now so there's this little area right here where they're protected and then as they move away once again you can get some more shots you just need to be careful of artillery and then this is why i always say that in the mid to late game this is when this is important like you unfortunately you weren't able to do a whole lot earlier but this is where this is important and you this is you don't want to hang out <laughs> like you're you're taking the worst possible uh, attack out of this you want to stay on that high elevation, force them to drive away where you can just basically get shots from back here and then duck back, get shots, duck back, get shots, duck back. You can kill these guys coming down over here. The hills is a, is a really powerful tool, you just need to learn how to use it. 
And that is part of the problem is that most people just just don't. They're just not really good at that. And again, remember, most of your effectiveness is not off the top on this side. Got, got a little bit of YOLO there, but all right. And again, you can still shoot these guys that are driving away. This is just a, a situation of, of far too little, far too late. And then you don't want to sit up here and just try to trade with these guys. Like trading is not is not to your advantage. You need to, yeah, use sniper mode a little bit more. Run away! Oh, that, this is not running away. Uh, you should have kept going because he's not going to reload in time, so you could have actually gotten around him again. So, I, this is the way that I see a lot of light tanks play this map, which again, I, I don't really feel is, is super fruitful. Um, you went up to the hill, which is, it's okay, like, it's not what I would do, um, but it was it didn't necessarily hurt your team that you were up here, it just didn't help your team that you were up here. Like, you didn't get any damage out that was, that was of any significance, you didn't really spot anything that your team would damage, you didn't really help these guys as, as their team pushed around here, you were basically kind of just like observing the whole game you're just like eh, you know, I'm just hanging out up here kind of kind of checking it out seeing what these guys are doing and, and you want to exert a little bit more influence on that especially if you're your top tier you need to be you need to have a little bit more influence exerted than, than what you did in that early game and then in that mid game a lot of the playing this hill is understanding where you can get your shots for free like as these guys drive away here you can basically sit up in a, in a lot of these ditches and get shots at them as they move away from the hill um, and that's really what you're what you're looking to do. You very rarely ever get any good shots sort of east to west here um, Just looking off of the west side of this lighthouse Most of the good shots are as they sort of cross under here to push into your team as they push away from it um, And things like that. Otherwise, I, you know, uh, theoretically speaking if your team is pushing around over here you can get shots from from the south side of this, but you, you I, I feel like you spent too much time as just kind of watching the, the game go by rather than actually being like, oh, I should help this guy or I should help that guy. And, and that, even as a light tank, that, that is an important part of the game is, is trying to figure out how, how can I help keep my, my, my friends alive. Um, and, and if you do that, then that makes it easier for everybody, including yourself, because then you don't have to do this, this 1v5, 1v7 at the end of the game. Um, so that, that's something that, that you'll want to, to, to keep in mind. Again, I don't necessarily feel like going up to the hill in the early game is bad. I just, I just have never seen anybody play there effectively uh, in the early game. Again, in the mid game, like when these guys are pushing around here, when these guys are pushing around here, sure, that's fine. Great position. Um, and you can do a lot, but you need to practice playing up there because um, I don't really feel like you were effective in dealing any damage or, or putting anybody uh, on the enemy team in an awkward position where they're just like, damn, I can't move across here because that LTTB keeps hitting me, right? Or I, I, I can't move here because that LTTB keeps lighting me. I can't do that. Like you didn't prevent, you didn't put anybody on the enemy team in an uncontrollable position. They were just like, oh yeah, this guy up there. All right, <laughs> whatever. All right. 
So if we look at the stats, yeah, I mean, you didn't get a whole lot out of your team, which is unfortunate, but that'll happen. Was well, not quite as close as I thought it would be. I don't think that that was necessarily a winnable game, but it's one of those things where you got to just try to keep your team alive, your team alive um, in terms of those guys that were pushing around the lighthouse, and then uh, you, know, you just roll the dice. At least, at least that would have given you a chance. So, unlike the uh, previous two games, I don't know necessarily that even if you played that super well that you would have won, but um, I, I, I just feel like you didn't give yourself an opportunity um, that you could have. But I think a lot of that is just experience in playing that hill and understanding that as they pass around the backside of that lighthouse, they're really vulnerable to you pestering them from the hill. And I think once you practice that a little bit more, then uh, then you'll you'll see that that's why it's that's a powerful position in that mid to late game uh, because people can't just cross there for free. But GG, nice try.